Hello, my name is Dan Weiss, and this is a video primer about the Book of Mormon comparative, or as I sometimes like to think of it, the Triple Combination Book of Mormon. Prior to the first edition publication of the Book of Mormon, a handwritten manuscript of the volume was penned by Oliver Cowdery and a few other scribes as the words were given directly from the lips of Joseph Smith. This copy is known as the original manuscript and will also be identified as the OM during this video. Because of the mishap with Martin Harris and the first 116 pages, Joseph decided to have Oliver Cowdery and a few others make a direct copy of the OM for safekeeping and for use by the printer in typesetting the book. This second handwritten copy is known as the printer's manuscript and will be identified as the PM during this presentation. Both the OM and PM have been combined in the Book of Mormon comparative with priority given to the extant text from the OM. These can be easily compared in the book to the current version of the Book of Mormon found at LDS.org. I will refer to this as the 2016 edition. This is the Triple Combination Book of Mormon, the OM, the PM, and the 2016 edition. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints reached its 150-year anniversary in 1980. The Deseret Book Company joined in the celebration by producing a beautifully bound, exact replica of the original publication of the 1830 edition Book of Mormon. Having never accessed the original book, I immediately purchased a copy. I'd heard rumors about the original being quite different from the current version, and this sparked my curiosity to discover more. Armed with a fine-tipped red marker, I opened the book and began comparing it to my 1977 triple combination, carefully making notes in the margins of the replica about each difference. I soon discovered this task to be larger than expected, and lost interest after several pages, at least for the moment. The Eighth Article of Faith came to mind. We believe the Bible to be the Word of God as far as it is translated correctly, followed by the words of Joseph Smith. I believe the Bible as it read when it came from the pen of the original writers. Since the original writings from the hands of the authors of the Bible are important, wouldn't the writings from the pens of Book of Mormon scribes likewise represent the closest model of the original words as they fell from the lips of the prophet? A new path became clear to me. In 1980, I attempted to identify all of the differences from the first publication to the 1977 version. 36 years later, I would compare the two original handwritten manuscripts to the church's web version in 2016 and catalog the changes. The even numbered pages on the left hand side of the book are the transcribed text of the OM and PM combination. The odd-numbered pages on the right-hand side are the current or 2016 edition. The words on both the right and left sides correspond with each other identically. Every difference is identified in red ink on the 2016 side, regardless of how insignificant it may seem. Even minor differences in punctuation are highlighted in red. One will easily note that for the sake of brevity 
and the conservation of paper, Oliver used ampersands almost exclusively, which have been modified in the current format. The PM has recently been featured in the 2015 release of the Joseph Smith Papers, Revelations and Translations, Volume 3. It has been carefully photographed and preserved since its writing, with nearly 100% of the writing intact. It accounts for 72% of the text on the OMPM side of the Book of Mormon comparative. The OM has not survived the years very well, and only accounts for 28% of the text in the Book of Mormon comparative. In 1841, construction began in Illinois on the Nauvoo House as per a revelation. In October, Joseph Smith placed the OM in the cornerstone of the building where it rested for nearly 40 years before being exhumed. The wear and tear of almost 160 seasons took its toll on the pages in the form of water damage and mold. In 2001, Royal Skousen released a transcription of the OM with intricate details about every readable portion of the pages. Photographs of the pages were not included, as with the Joseph Smith Papers, Revelations and Translations, Volume 3 of the PM, and have not been made available to the public to date. In printing this volume, I decided to utilize color for the text to identify its most important aspects. On the OMPM, or even numbered side, all text in black ink is directly from the PM, and all text in blue is directly from the OM. Again, the OM is given absolute priority over the PM, and as such, where the text is available from both manuscripts, the OM will be displayed. On the 2016 edition, or odd-numbered side, all of the text shown is exactly as it reads on LDS.org. Where the text matches the OM and PM, it is represented in blue and black ink on this side as well. Any differences or modifications from the two original documents will be represented in red ink. Great care has been taken to preserve both the authenticity of the OMPM and to present the 2016 edition in its current form. Every attempt has been made to maintain the integrity of both versions. Indeed, my hope is that this version of the Book of Mormon can be a valuable reference tool for scholar, student, skeptic, and critic alike. The symbols on the right are meant to be as unobtrusive as possible yet apparent enough so the reader will not miss the opportunity to reference the left side for insight. Although it might take a little getting used to, the student could quote directly from the 2016 side in Sunday School with the same confidence as reading it from LDS.org. For example, here's how Alma 11, 16 through 20 reads. And a shiblam is a half of a shiblon, and a leah is the half of a shiblam. Now this is their number, according to their reckoning. Now an antion of gold is equal to three shiblons. Now it was for the sole purpose to get gain, because they received their wages according to their employ. Therefore, they did stir up the people to riotings, and all manner of disturbances and wickedness, that they might have more employ. 
that they might get money according to the suits which were brought before them. Therefore, they did stir up the people against Alma and Amulek. Admittedly, this looks confusing, but I'll explain everything in a moment. First, I want to offer you a copy of the book. It's not for sale, and the only way to obtain it is to email me at danweiss at comcast.net. I have fewer than 35 copies available at this point, and I'm looking for a publisher so I can reach a larger audience. However, I'm also interested in getting copies into the hands of people who will use this book and wear it out. So if you have publishing potential, or you're thinking this volume is a useful tool in your studies of the Book of Mormon, drop me an email with your best pitch and we'll see what happens. The books are being produced now and I hope to have finished copies in hand by the end of March 2016. They're printed in 32 pound gloss stock with gold gilded edges, a permanent fabric page marker, and gold screen printed graphics against its beautiful black cover. I'll now explain the symbols used in the book as well as other benefits. The OMPM is on the left side of the book and is identified as such in the header on even numbered pages. The 2016 side is on the right side of the book and is identified as such in the header on odd numbered pages. Text in bold red ink represents a change or an addition to the text from the OMPM side. One of the more famous corrections is shown here, where the name Benjamin was used in the PM, but was later corrected to be Mosiah. A bracketed underscored line in bold red ink represents a deletion to a single letter or space from the OMPM side. Multiple missing letters are rendered as such. A bracketed X in bold red ink represents the deletion of a full word from the OMPM side. Multiple missing words are rendered as such. A bracketed dash in bold red ink represents a hyphen within a word from the OMPM side. In many cases, the hyphens were placed on the following line of the OMPM text, and little attention was given to dividing them by syllables. The full word has been brought back up to the starting line, and the text is rendered like this. An empty bracket identifies an open space on the OMPM side. Normally, it is where text might have been present at one time, but no indication of writing exists any longer. An unaccountable space next to legible lettering is rendered with a hollow strike-through red diamond. Verse numbers found in the 2016 edition are given in superscript next to the first letter of the verse. Over the years, both the OM and the PM have been edited as new editions are readied for print. The most obvious examples on the PM are when Joseph Smith made changes for the 1837 edition. Notably, Oliver Cowdery backtracked and edited parts, which are shown in the Joseph Smith Papers, Revelations and Translations, Volume 3, in brown ink. In order to keep it as authentic as possible, no post-writing edits have been included on the OMPM side. Corrections of this type are only included if a scribe made an error 
and corrected it immediately. There are two exceptions made to this rule. Many page numbers were added later. They appear in my text as reversed out blocks of black for the PM and blue for the OM. Additionally, a few lines at the top of the OM pages were left blank so the page could later be identified by an event depicted within its lines. This insight is not well known to the average member of the church. When this happens, it's identified in underlined blue ink on the OMPM side and is always accompanied by a page break. When a new page of the OM is reached with existing text, it is identified with a drop to the following line of text as shown here. Some elements of the OM only exist as fragments but are still given priority even though it causes words to appear multicolored. There are a few age damaged areas of text which are shown in gray ink. These represent best guess efforts based on published texts and appear on both the OMPM and 2016 sides. A strike through is used on the OMPM side with words, letters, or spaces which were identified by the scribe as being incorrect or in error in some way. An illegible character within a partially legible word is rendered with a hollow black diamond. Repeated diamonds represent the approximate number of illegible characters on the OMPM side. There are many instances where minor changes, differences, or assumptions had to be made in transcribing the text from the OMPM documents. This is considered a best foot forward approach and the use of italics simplifies the identity of these items and replaces them with the best option which is normally text having been overwritten as the error was recognized. The integrity of the letter word is maintained even if it's in error. However, when it's too close to call, the benefit of the doubt goes with common sense. The use of italics is only present on the OMPM side. Parenthesis marks are used on the OMPM side for insertions when words or letters are added as an immediate correction, replacing the caret mark. Typically, though not always, these words or letters are inserted directly above or near the error. Insertions are treated as changes and as such are represented in bold red ink on the 2016 edition side. Incorrect spellings are repaired without additional annotation symbols on this side. An assumed but not present hyphen is represented as empty closed parenthesis marks, black ink, both OMPM and 2016 sides. Since the PM is being used as our base text, I've attempted to maintain the exact letter word count found on the handwritten copy. Notice how the final line of page 133 of the PM reads, Stir his people up in rebellion against my people, therefore they began to prepare for war. These 16 words are replicated on both sides of my book in the same order. Note that the words stir and about are shifted one letter to the right of the justification. I've added that space also. However, some of these changes are more arbitrary than others and only occur on the OMPM side. 
Occasionally, the lines will be a little longer on the transcription. Rather than crowd the text by using a smaller font, I am using a black pyramid marker at the location where this happens. Thus, the integrity of the line may vary for a line or two until it resolves itself. This is incorporated on both the OMPM side and the 2016 side. A typical comparative line from both sides will look like this portion of ALMA 3051. Please pause the video and analyze this page for clarity. This copy of the Book of Mormon Comparative is Volume 1. It covers 1st Nephi through Alma 35. I'm presently working on the remainder. Thank you for watching this presentation and for your support of this type of research.